Hello, everybody. I'm Michael Perna with Keller Williams Realty over here in uh, Detroit, Michigan, home of the horrible market. Um, I've been with Favorite Agent for three and a half years. I think that's about right, three years maybe. Uh, my number of uh, buy-side transactions through Favorite Agent have carried from roughly 30 to 35 per year. Uh, now I'm up over 80. Listings taken was around 15 to 18 uh, per year. Uh, now I'm up over 40. Uh, the great thing about this system as well is for the few dollars it costs per month, I was able to reduce my internet lead generation bill by over 50%. Hi, my name is Matt Jones, and I'm the president and CEO of FavoriteAgent.com. This listing presentation will show you how to list at 8% commission virtually every single time. Oh, I know that sounds incredible, but it's true. There's no reason that you can't list for 8% or even more. The secret is in this presentation. Okay, before we dive into the presentation, it's important that we first mention ethics. In other words, how can I better serve my clients while charging them more? Simply by having that thought, you've confirmed that you're an ethical realtor who's trying to put your client's interest first. That's a good thing. Having said it, though, I need to underscore the fallacy in such a line of thinking. The question we've asked seems to imply that you can't earn good money by doing the right thing. But the truth is that it's possible to serve your client, your fellow realtors, and yourself and, and with this presentation, it's also easy. Let me explain. We'll begin by discussing agency, specifically seller agency. Now, as a listing agent, your client is the seller in any transaction. You're the seller's agent, though, and you have a fiduciary obligation to represent him or her to the best of your ability. As a rule, you should be trying to get the client the most money in the shortest amount of time, since that's the goal with most sellers. And when I mention money, I specifically mean net dollars. Ultimately, it doesn't matter how large or small the commission is. What counts is the total taken away from the closing table. So if you knew about a strategy that would net your client more money while selling his home in only about half the usual time, wouldn't it be in his interest to use it? Well, of course it would. Well, that's what this listing presentation will do for you. As compared with, tr with traditional listings of homes in the same market, my presentation will give you a strategy that has traditionally netted my clients 2.7% more money while selling their homes in only 55% of the average days on market. More money in half the time. Think of it. Your clients and the other agents in the market will love you. You'll be paid better in the process, and you'll begin to acquire a reputation for being the agent with the high-paying listings. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take this thing one step at a time. So, on the flip side, if you knew that selling a house by the traditional method would double your client's waiting time, and in the process net him less money, would that be good for him? Of course not. Not even if you saved him some money in commissions. Your job as a listing agent is to represent the seller and to replace his needs and to place his needs first, and that's what we're going to do. Before we get into the listing presentation, it's important for you to do an honest assessment of your ability as an agent. Can you look into the mirror and feel deep down that you're the very best person to represent your seller client? If you can't, uh, regardless of the listing approach you use, it would be unethical to offer your services to the client in the first place. In fact, you'd have a fiduciary obligation to re recommend your fellow agent, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, as the best agent to help him. So how do you become the best agent to represent your client? Well, you need to do your homework. You need to study your market. You need to know your, your market statistics cold. You need to have clear-cut marketing strategies. And you need to have a specific marketing plan that would yield results better than those of the competition. Otherwise, you have nothing to offer the client. Does that make sense? Why should your client list, with, list his most valuable asset with you if you don't know what you're doing? Let me ask you this. Would you list with yourself? And if your answer to my last question isn't a resounding yes, 
then you need to stop and become that ideal agent before you go any further in this training. Now, prior to listing the first house, I knew our market statistics cold. I pulled the raw data from our local MLS and crunched the numbers. Was it fun? Of course not. Nevertheless, I needed to know what I was talking about. Trust me about this. Your client will recognize whether or not you know what you're talking about. If you're bluffing, he'll sense it. You can't fake the funk, as they say. I wish I could tell you how many times a listing client has quoted an agent on something that I've known to be incorrect. But because I was completely familiar with my market, I'd be able to explain that the agent, while very likely a nice person, had his facts wrong. Then I'd lay the statistics on the client, and it was quite obvious to both of us that I knew what I was doing. Here's the basic market data you need to know before going to your first listing appointment. Number one, days on market, or DOM. Average days on market is critical to your seller client for several reasons. It's important in setting realistic expectations about the time needed to sell a home. It'll help you evaluate any offers that come in and make an educated decision about whether it's advisable for your client to wait, an, uh, wait on another offer to take what's on the table. And, and, and if you know the DOM, or the days on market for your market, or better yet, for even your client's neighborhood, you'll be able to guide him or her through the process like a professional, which is exactly what you are. There's a problem with DOM statistics, though. Most MLS databases have a much, a much manipulated days on market number, which is invariably skewed low. Now, how can you know what the real number is? Is it possible to determine the actual days on market for your market, even if you're not a rocket scientist? Well, absolutely. Just use the absorption rate to calculate the true DOM for your area. Let me explain. Here's how you get the real days on market. First, find out how many homes sold in your market in the last 12 months and how many are currently on the market. For example, if 10,000 homes sold last year and there are currently 5,000 on the market, what those numbers indicate is that the inventory turned over twice last year. In other words, 10,000 divided by 5,000 equals 2. That's the number of times that the inventory turned over. Now, there are 12 months in a year, and 12, the number of months, divided by 2, the times, the times that the inventory turned over, equals 6, which is the absorption month, and it's given in months. Yeah. The absorption, bleh, start over. God, she made it as clear as mud. Now, there are 12 months in a year, and 12 divided by 2 equals 6, which is the absorption rate meaning that the average time actually on market is six months. So to convert the absorption rate to days on market, you simply multiply this last number by 30. Six, six months times 30, equals 180. And if you figure days on market this way, you'll eliminate all manipulation in your market by builders and agents who relist stigmatized homes, which, of course, are those homes that have picked up a negative image due to their excessive time on market. Okay, the second number you need to know is your days on market standard deviation. What? By now you're thinking, Matt Jones has lost his mind. Now, before you dismiss this concept and me as crazy, let me point out that it will be very easy to calculate and it will give you a powerful advantage once you know it. Now, how do you calculate it? The easiest way to calculate days on market standard deviation is by using a spreadsheet like Microsoft Excel. On your computer, pull up all the closed residential properties for your community for the last year. You'll want to pull them up in your MLS using a one-liner format. In other words, every property on a single line. Then copy and paste that data into a spreadsheet. Next, you'll want to delete all but three of the columns. The only columns that need to remain are list price, sale price, and days on market. Now at the bottom of each of these columns, calculate the average and the standard deviation. Okay, now you have the numbers, so let's assume that the standard deviation of the DOM is 53 days. 
And let's further assume that your calculation of the absorption method indicates that the true days on market is 186 days. Now comes the fun part. Add one standard deviation, remember 53 days, to your average of 186, and you have 239, or 239 days. Add another standard deviation, you have 292 days. Now here's what that means for your listing client. You have a 50% chance of selling his home in the average days on market. If you add one standard deviation, you take the probabilities to 84%. And if you add another standard deviation, it's 93%. Another standard deviation would elevate the probabilities to 96 and then to 98 and so on. Now, let's say uh, that, a, that a competing realtor tries to convince your client that his home can sell in a matter of days and that he should list it for 90 days. You can tell your client with complete certainty that the statistical probability of selling his home in a few days is nil, and that in reality he should expect the process to take the average amount of time plus at least one standard deviation, using the illustration above, and you should inform him that he has a 93% probability of selling his home in 292 days using the typical approach. If that's how long statistically it'll take to sell his house, then listing it for 90 days will clearly be a waste of everybody's time. Now, your immediate reaction may be that your clients will never go for this system. Yet they will. In all but one of my listings, I received one-year terms, and in the remaining listing, I got a six-month term knowing that, it would sell, that I would sell the house even sooner. So when you tell a client with authority how long it will take to sell his home, he'll inevitably respect your honesty and the fact that you know exactly what it takes to sell a home in your market. You're not guessing, like most agents, and in fact, you're speaking with the voice of authority. Knowing your market better than any other agent will impress your clients while also giving your own confidence a level, uh, your own confidence level a boost. Well, I'm out of time for this video. But in the second half of this session, I'll cover the other key numbers you need to know and how you can go about getting them. This knowledge will give you a huge advantage over your competition, so you really won't want to miss the second half.